everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Svenja and here on YouTube I love talking all things knitting and yarn related and today I'm back for a very special episode because I'm going to be sharing a recent trip that I went on to Denmark and Sweden where I did lots and lots of yarn shopping and exploring some of the local knitting stores. So if that's something that interests you then keep on watching. So I feel like I need to start things off with a bit of a disclaimer. This is by no means like a travel guide or a yarn shop review video. This is just me sharing my own personal experience with you. Um, I know I personally love watching others explore kind of knitting shops in different parts of the world. So I really hope to just inspire you um, and maybe provide some insight if you were to also travel to these areas, but definitely do your own research if you're looking for any kind of concrete information if you're trip planning yourself. Um, so again, yeah, just my own personal experience and I hope you enjoy. So to give you some context for this video, um, we traveled to both uh, Denmark and Sweden for a total of nine days and eight nights. And we spent the majority of the time in Copenhagen um, and then took a train up to Stockholm for a few nights um, and stayed pretty local to those bigger cities because we were traveling you know, primarily by train, by foot, bicycle. Um, so again, I went with my husband. This was definitely a trip just for leisure. Um, we were really looking to kind of experience the culture, um, you know, see the art, um, history, experience food, and of course like knitting and yarn fit into that perfectly because these are both really big hubs for knitting and fiber arts. So before we even left for our trip, I did a lot of research leading up to figure out kind of what knitting stores I actually wanted to visit and then looked on a map and saw kind of where they were in relation to other plans we had. Um, again, this wasn't a trip primarily for like knitting and yarn purposes, although I did end up visiting quite a few shops. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you know, going there was sort of convenient along the route that we had otherwise planned. So I did a lot of uh, research online, specifically like Google, Google Maps, TripAdvisor, um, and basically came up with like a yarn shop wish list. And from there, I visited the website of these shops and kind of perused their yarn selections um, to figure out kind of what shops were really worth going to. Um, I really hope to kind of touch and feel some um, European yarns that I don't have really great access to in the United States, so that was definitely a priority. And from there, I also made sort of a shopping list of um, yarns that I would consider purchasing um, and then also kind of had in mind what project I might use them for um, just so I had a really great sort of guideline um, going into this and didn't feel sort of overwhelmed once I got there um, and pressured to like buy something or make a decision on the spot. I also did quite a bit of cost comparison. I wanted to make sure that the yarn that I was buying was still sort of a responsible financial decision um, because of the difference in the tax rate. Uh, comparatively, it's much higher in European countries than it is in the United States. However, um, once you factor in, you know, taxes and shipping to get some of those more specialty European yarns over to the United States, you know, you might be looking at the same cost essentially if you were to buy it um, in the store, you know, abroad. So that's the majority of the research that I did. Um, we were able to make it to most of the stores on my list. Um, a few kind of fell off um, towards the end as we, you know, changed our plans once we get there, but that's totally fine. And I'll explain a little bit more throughout this episode. Um, generally, I am super fulfilled from this experience. I was really, really excited to visit um, both Copenhagen and Stockholm, which are, to me, I consider major knitting hubs. Um, so yeah, let's dig in. First stop in Copenhagen was a shop called Summerfuglen, which was at the top of my yarn shop wish list for a few different reasons. Um, first of all, it was located in this really like charming part of the city that we were already exploring for different reasons. So it kind of fit into our plans really well. Lots of like, quaint little streets, unique shops, cafes, um, 
And then two, they had a incredible yarn selection that I was really excited about. And I um, remember getting there, I think it was like midday on a Friday, and I was shocked to see how busy it was. And it felt like primarily locals. Um, lots and lots of people shopping for yarn and I ended up spending like over an hour um, and I think it was mostly because I had to like wait a little bit to get to the shelves which is fine. It did clear out at a certain point um, so I had a little bit more time to myself. Um, however, because of how great the location was, my husband was able to have a couple beers um, next door waiting for me. So overall a really great experience for both of us. Um, so yeah, this was a wonderful store, um, really kind of bright and colorful. I think it doubles as like an embroidery store, um, lots of different kind of materials to do that craft. They had uh, Camera Rose, Phil Kalana, Isiger, Long Yarns, Rico, lots of Sanna, Knitting for Olive, um, and a few yarn brands I'd never heard about before. Um, the Butterflies Yarn, Chaos Yarn, and um, Fröhlich. So yeah, I had a great experience kind of just shopping around. Um, I also had some plans to purchase yarn at this place because I knew it was the first stop um, on our trip and then actually start a project from the yarn that I bought there. And that's exactly what I'm wearing right now. So this is my Marseille sweater, which I'm also um, d kind of dubbing as like a souvenir sweater um, because I was able to make most of it actually on our trip. So I didn't bring anything to knit on the first leg of the trip but then of course started this project so this is actually the yarn I'm wearing it um, that I purchased at Summer Flugen. Um, this is a knit in Santa Scarn double Sunday, and the colors are whipped cream and then the stripe here is called cardamom. Um, I actually had the off-colored stripe color so I actually brought that with me on our trip um, and then bought most of the um, the beige color on or at Summer Flugen. So yeah so that's my yarn purchase there. Um, I was actually surprised I didn't buy more. I think I was quite overwhelmed with how much yarn they had. Um, they actually had a really big table in the back of their shop that was right next to this shelf that had lots and lots of sample knits. So I was able to kind of pull out some of the sweaters, lay them out, really feel some of the yarn, especially yarn combinations like merino and mohair, um, to kind of feel them knit up, which is really important. Um, I feel like things always feel a bit different knitted up than they do in the ball or skein. So yeah, so this is my sweater. I'm very, very happy with it. I'll share a little bit more about the details in like a upcoming um, podcast episode, kind of more about the knitting details. But overall, I got a great sweater um, from the yarn that I purchased at this beautiful shop and I would definitely go back again. So uh, if you're visiting Copenhagen, you know, definitely check out Summer Flugen. The next yarn store that we went to in Copenhagen was called Tante Grown, and this holds a special place in my heart. I had had my eyes on their social media page for many months leading up to our trip. Um, really excited to experience this store and I'm so glad that we were able to go. So we planned a day where we went and got a really nice breakfast and then biked to the shop which was a really nice experience. It's located in the neighborhood of Fredericksburg which is another beautiful part of the city um, and again surrounded by cafes so my husband stayed very busy. Um, I was actually the first one there when this shop opened um, so I had plenty of time to explore and kind of have the, sh have the shop to myself. Um, I met a, the very friendly owner who um, chatted with me for a while. She was so kind and kind of helped orient me around the shop. Turns out there's actually two locations. Um, there's uh, one a few hours away that's owned by a different family member so it's really nice to know that the knitting um, stores, I guess, multiple, um, are still within the same family. Um, yeah, I, I, can't, I don't know what to say. This is a beautiful store. It was filled, filled with yarn, like floor to ceiling, um, baskets on the ground, tables, um, things on the wall. Um, 
really great selection of yarn, uh, specifically Phil Kalana, Stan Ness, Lang, Issachar, Camera Rose, um, Cardiff, and then a few others, Creme K Wool I've never um, even heard of, actually. Um, Noro, I've worked with Noro a bit, but it's kind of surprised to see how much Noro they had. Um, and then one yarn brand specifically that I was really hoping to find there, and that is, I'll probably pronounce it wrong, um, Hell Holt El Spindery. Um, this is a Danish yarn, and I was really, really excited, hoping that they had a little bit of a selection for me to, um, kind of look at and potentially buy. Uh, so I did a lot of um, kind of perusing there. Like I said, I had the shop to myself. They had a really great uh, like sample rack of different um, knitting patterns knit up in their yarn. And I ended up finding this really beautiful like cotton yarn that was knit up into Petite Knits um, uh, cumulus blouse and I loved it. I loved the drape. I loved the color. Um, so I actually found and purchased a sweater quantity of that same yarn, which I'll show you here. So this is what I ended up buying. Um, it is called Nordic Yarn Lab uh, Tromso and it is a, I believe, a fingering weight cotton. And I bought five balls to make like a summer tea, potentially the cumulus blouse. Um, the owner was describing this um, yarn as kind of a, not like a newer generation, but like a, I don't know, an, uh, this yarn got an, a facelift essentially over the last few months. Um, I believe this is the Knitting Shop's yarn brand, um, formerly called Tante Grown. So I don't know if they're transitioning all of their yarn to be called a Nordic Yarn Lab, but anyways, there are quite a few different um, types of yarn that were under the same label. Uh, yeah, so I got it in this really nice beige color. I thought it'd be perfect to make um, for like a spring or summer tea next year. So that's the first purchase I made. And then the other yarn I ended up getting, it was exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so this is, this is the yarn here. So it's the <laughs> company I can't say, Hill Holtz Old Spindery. And this is called Dansk Pulsult and it is a fingering weight yarn. And it is a beautiful, beautiful heathered gray wool. It's so soft. It's got this amazing halo. I don't know if you can see that or appreciate it. And I got a total of three skeins to hopefully make a sweater. So I was really excited to find this. Um, they did have, I believe, two or three different varieties of their wool in different weight and a gorgeous color selection, lots of kind of like deep, rich colors, um, but the gray really, really appealed to me. So that is what I purchased. Um, I was really happy to have found something that I, you know, had planned to potentially buy and then was also surprised by um, something that I found in the store, like the cotton tea. So yeah, and then as I was checking out, um, the owner gifted me a tote bag that had her label on it. So I was able to kind of put my yarn in there, and that's actually what served as my yarn bag for all of my yarn at the end of the trip. I actually stuffed everything in. I think it was more than 30 skeins total. Um, stuffed it into that bag tied it up and then it kind of served as a pillow on the way home too. So uh, yeah, it was a really nice experience. Um, I loved the shop. I thought it was just so quaint and like just charming through and through. So great experience at Tante Grown. Again, thank you to the owner for being so friendly and welcoming. I had a wonderful experience. So there was one other yarn shop in Copenhagen that we literally just stumbled upon. Um, I had, like I said, researched for many weeks leading up to our trip um, and actually ran into a few issues while kind of searching online. Um, I feel like maybe there's a difference in the search engine and the kind of the terminology used to pick up on what, what might be like a knitting or yarn shop. Um, but uh, yeah, so we were literally walking on the, on the street and ran into a yarn shop, which 
being myself and like doing a lot of research everywhere we go and kind of knowing where all local yarn stores are located it's really rare to just like stumble upon a knitting store but this is exactly what happened um turns out it is a place called self-made which is formerly called stuff and still um it was more so like a maker supply store so it had a wide variety of different um, crafting supplies, things like embroidery, of course knitting, um, and then there was actually a whole other section to the store that was all fabric. So um, I would definitely live at the store if I lived uh, closer. Um, it felt like um, just like a a really big collection of, of things, kind of like your go-to place if you needed something um, for any type of craft. Um, they also had a few yarns that I'd never heard of before. I'm not quite sure if they're local um, or just not available in the United States. I admittedly have not done a lot of research. Um, however, they, the two that stand out are called Dew Store and Freya. Freya. Um, and I didn't buy anything at the store. We were kind of crunched for time. Um, so I didn't have a ton of time to browse around, but yeah, this was definitely a really cool store. And then looking back online, it's actually listed as a window treatment store, like in the Google search, like if you were to find it and then it's like classified as that. So I think that's probably why it didn't show up on my search. It was like right down the street from our hotel. So I'm shocked that I missed it. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool place and I think worth going to if you're in the area. There are obviously so many knitting stores in Copenhagen and I thought it would be nice just to do like some honorable mentions of other stores that were on my list that we didn't get to. Um, the first one is Knitting for Olive. It kind of breaks my heart a little bit that we didn't go to Knitting for Olive. Um, however, it was a little bit further out um, from where we were staying and it just didn't really work out with other plans to get there. Um, and then most of the other stores that I was visiting anyways had plenty of Knitting for Olive. Uh, you know, I think for next time I would definitely make an effort to go. Um, from what I see online, their shop is beautiful. I would have loved to see their like rack of um, sample knits and then also see all of their different colorways. Um, but again, you know, there was a lot of knitting for Olive in the different shops available to me. So I didn't feel like it was totally necessary to go kind of out of my way. Um, I did end up purchasing a little bit of Knitting for Olive at a different store, um, but I think if you, you know, really love their mohair or any type of yarn that they produce, I think it would be worth uh, visiting. And then two others, one is called Flid, which was not even on my radar before we traveled. Um, I just happened to find it online kind of afterwards while um, kind of looking back on pictures. Um, of our trip. Um, but yeah, so Flit is a cute little store. I think they have a great selection of yarn that you might not otherwise find um, in some of those other stores. I believe it was De Ruim Natura when I looked. Don't quote me on that, but it's ringing a bell. And then the last uh, shop is Nicoline Garn. I read a lot of great reviews about this store. Um, we did bike past a yarn store that I didn't like glimpse I didn't catch um the name they were also closed and I just kind of peeked in and I don't remember where it was or what it was called so it could have been Nicoline Garn um but anyways yeah I would have loved to make it to these but was very fulfilled from our time in Copenhagen um and really happy with my arm purchases so once we got to Stockholm we only had three days to spend one actually we went on a day trip so I take that back. We only had two days to really explore the city. And for that reason, I think the yarn store visiting was probably kept at a minimum. We also didn't do like a lot of planning, like good planning um, to get me to these stores, like with a lot of time to shop, if that makes sense. Um, so there were two specifically on my list um, and we did sort of go a bit out of the way to get to them. Um, we didn't really account for how long it would take from where we were staying. And so we got to 
the first store, which was actually already closed by the time that we got there. Um, so kind of later on in the day. And that one was called Fingerborg, um, which I loved when I saw it online. I would have loved to go in and shop. I did a little bit of window browsing. Um, but yeah, they have a lot of gardener yarns, um, which is, a, I believe, a yarn company out of the UK or um, maybe kind of overlaps with some Scottish um, like wool producers, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we did make it to Fingerborg, but then we did make it to um, La Tete Nice Stand, which was um, just a few blocks away and was open a little bit later. And I think I would say that this is probably my favorite shop out of the whole uh, lot on our trip. So we got there, I think I had maybe like 15 minutes total before they were closing. And I didn't even have enough time to like make it around the shop. They just had so much yarn. They had so many different types of yarn, lots of kind of the typical like European um, bigger box brand yarn. Um, but also a lot of um, like Malabrigo, onion yarn, uh, Rauma, um, Chapel Valle, earth yarns, and then some wool addicts. And those were yarns that I don't have a ton of access to. Um, and I was able to kind of just browse quickly on the shelf. So this was just such a like bright and airy and happy yarn shop. Lots of really fun colors and um, also really like strategically arranged. It was just a nice shopping environment. Um, you could kind of see all the colorways nicely. Everything was nicely organized. Um, so from a shopping perspective, yeah, definitely thumbs up. Um, I got a few things from this shop. Um, well, actually two, two sweater quantities. Um, I got a little bit more double Sunday here because Again, I was knitting on this sweater while we were traveling up to Stockholm. We had a five hour train ride from Copenhagen to Stockholm. So yeah, I got a lot of time with uh, Double Sunday and really, really enjoyed working with it. So um, I, yeah, I just went ahead and bought a whole nother sweater quantity of Double Sunday in this really great color. Um, it is color number 6580. It's kind of a dark, like, slate blue. It's picking up a lot more royal blue on the, on the camera. Um, but just really, really loved this shade. So I got a sweater quantity of this. And then some Stannis Garn Duo, which is, I don't know off the top of my head. It is a merino and cotton yarn. And this is the color 1015 and I bought I think four balls so enough to make like a tank top or like a little shirt yeah I stuck with very um, kind of neutral colors of course the pop of blue I felt very like nautical um, yeah yeah so yeah so that's what I got at La Tete Nystan um, they also had this really like nice selection of yarn jewelry. So like earrings that are yarn skeins or yarn balls. Um, yeah, I, it was really cute. So definitely a great experience. We also had a wonderful dinner afterwards, um, kind of in the heart of the city. And so that was a really nice memory. So kind of the day itself, even though I felt a little rushed in the store, um, it was just a really great experience. And I think I would, um, definitely make that like a top priority if I were to go back to Stockholm. So one honorable mention on my list from our time in Stockholm uh, that we didn't make it to is a place called Makerai um, 14, which I also believe is like a maker supply store. And you'll have to excuse me, they're the ones that have the day room Natura. So I don't think that was Fingerborg. Um, but they also have um, Kaios and Maho or Majo, Mayo yarn. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. Um, but that is a um, kind of, I believe, a newer um, yarn brand that I've seen a lot of advertisement for, but I would have loved to kind of see that in person. Um, so yeah, Maker A 14. And then um, 
There was one more shop that we went to, and this was on a day trip out of Stok Stockholm um, to Helsingor. Uh, that was um, a little kind of, I don't know, eight hour trip that we did to um, visit the castle where Shakespeare based his Hamlet play from out of. Um, so that was a really, really cool day trip, and I had actually no plans to do any more yarn shopping. I feel like I had bought enough. I was very fulfilled, um, but as we were on our walk back to the train station, again, walked right past another yarn store, um, and of course had to go in. So this place is called Nordgarn, um, and it kind of doubles as like a little coffee hangout place. There was like an espresso maker on the checkout desk. There were lots of like little couches and places to sit and knit. Um, really great big windows. So the natural light was so beautiful. And I really wish I had more time here. Um, there were shelves literally floor to ceiling with the most gorgeous yarn um, and the owner um, was very very sweet as well so I did not buy any yarn um, however I did manage to find and I'll show you here some petite knit labels which were on my list and literally took to our very last day to actually find in store um, I did feel that there was a lot of petite knit um, like bags or like brand like branded accessories whether it was like the needle organizer or like the little tote bags um they were available you know slim pickings there weren't a lot available in every store i have a feeling they probably sell out pretty quickly but this was the one place that i found these labels which i was really excited about um, so i picked up a few i've actually already used some of them one is um sewn into the sweater here and then i just uh, finished another project and used another there um, but yeah so I was really really happy with um, that and it was a nice kind of surprise to wrap up the trip so overall I had an amazing time um, you know the people were amazing we just made some really nice memories and again really pleased with my yarn shopping um, I really hope you enjoyed some of the video footage here I try to be really respectful in public places like videoing I, I never like to get you know people that don't really want to be on camera on camera um, so try to keep it limited um, and also really want you know in those moments to experience things firsthand and not kind of behind the lens um, but I hope it gave you a little bit of um, insight uh, into my experience. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have visited any of these shops or if you have any recommendations yourself. Um, I'm not going back anytime soon, but uh, would definitely um, in a heartbeat if I could. So yeah, drop your recommendations or your, um, your experiences or thoughts. I'd love to hear them. And yeah, as always, happy knitting and I'll see you next time. Okay.